Hello students. Welcome to Teach You Smart. Today, we are going to open up a new topic. Rational numbers. Look at this plate with chocolates. Let's count these chocolates by placing them on the number line. One, two, three, four. The numbers one, two, three, four, etc., are used for counting chocolates. These numbers are called counting numbers or natural numbers, denoted by n. That is, natural numbers are one, two, three, four, etc., up to infinity. Now that we have placed all the chocolates on the number line, how many chocolates are left on the plate? There is nothing left on the plate. Mathematically, we represent this as zero. If we include zero to the set of natural numbers, then they are called whole numbers. Denoted by W. That is zero, one, two, three, four, etc. up to infinity are called whole numbers. Now, let's see what happens when we add these whole numbers using the number line. When we add 3 and 2 on the number line, we started from 3, then move 2 steps to the right of 3 and get 5. Similarly, when we add 1 and 2, starting from 1, we move 2 steps to the right of 1 and get 3. That is, when we add whole numbers, we move to the right side and get a whole number itself. What happens when we subtract a whole number from another whole number? When we subtract 2 from 5, we move 2 steps to the left of 5 and get 3. That is, when we subtract a whole number from another whole number, we move to the left side of the number line now what happens when we subtract a bigger number from a smaller number? When we subtract 4 from 3. Let's start moving from 3 towards left side. First step to the left would be 2, second step would be 1, and third step would be 0. Now, what do we do? We have to move one more place to the left of 0 to subtract 4 from 3. This number to the left of 0, will be marked as minus 1. That is, we get 3 minus 4 equals minus 1. Let's try another example. Let's subtract 4 from 2. Again, 4 steps to the left, starting from 2. First step to the left would be 1. Second step would be 0. Third step would be minus 1 and fourth step would be minus 2. Likewise, we can write infinite numbers to the left of 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. These are negative of natural numbers and are called negative numbers with value less than 0. Can you tell how do we use these negative numbers in our real life? Let's look at a couple of real-life examples. What is the room temperature in the classroom? It's 20 degrees Celsius. What if you climb to the top of Mount Everest? We all know that it is freezing cold on top of Mount Everest. The temperature on the top of Mount Everest ranges from minus 10 degrees Celsius to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Look at another example. In order to measure the elevation and depth on Earth's surface, scientists marks the sea level as zero. When the sea level is marked as zero, anything above the sea level is measured with positive numbers and anything below the sea level is measured with negative numbers. Look at that ship in the sea. The top of a ship above the sea level is 
at 49 feet and the bottom of the ship is below the sea level, is at minus 30 feet. Similarly, negative numbers have many practical applications in our daily life. Let's come back to our number line. The collection of positive numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Negative numbers minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, etc. and 0 are called integers and denoted as z. Are there any more numbers that we can think about? Let's zoom into a section of a number line. Say between 0 and 1, are there any numbers in between 0 and 1? Let's consider this single unit between 0 and 1 to be a chocolate. What do we do if we want to share this chocolate between two people? Of course, we can cut it into two equal parts. Here one part is exactly half of the whole chocolate. That is, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 equals 1. Here 1 by 2 is a fraction. Let's check another example. Look here, there are five blocks. These five blocks are arranged one by one. Three of them are red. That is, three blocks are red out of five. We can represent the red blocks as three by five. Here three by five is a fraction. Now consider the blue blocks. Two blocks are blue out of five. Blue blocks can be represented as two by five. Here two by five is also a fraction. Here, 1 by 2, 3 by 5, and 2 by 5 are fractions, which is in the form of p by q, where p and q are integers, and the denominator, q, not equal to 0. Such numbers are called rational numbers, denoted by q. That is, a rational number is a number of the form p by q, where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. 3 by 7, minus 1 by 3, 4 by 5, etc. are some rational numbers. Now, is it possible to determine whether positive numbers and negative numbers are rational numbers? Let's check. We can write minus 3 equals minus 3 by 1. Minus 4 equals minus 4 by 1. 19 equals 19 by 1. 23 equals 23 by 1. That is, positive numbers and negative numbers are rational numbers. Then, a question arises: Is 0 a rational number? Yes, of course, 0 is also a rational number, because 0 can be written as 0 by 1, or 0 by 8, or 0 by any number. So, we can conclude that every integer is a rational number. In general, we can represent rational number as Let's have a quick recap. Today we discussed natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Let's check how much you understood by doing an activity. Is the reciprocal of 0 by 1 a rational number? That's all for now. See you all in the next class.